So you might be thinking about installing a solar system on your RV. We did this and it has been game changing. My husband and I live and work in our Airstream and we put a Mac Daddy solar system on that runs our Instant Pot, computers, everything we need to live and work full time. After scouring the internet and trying to not only design, but also learn to install our solar system, we ended up buying a kit from AM Solar and doing a self-install. Now we paid full price for our system, but because we loved working with AM Solar so much, we contacted them and got everybody watching this video a 5% discount code, which trust me, can save you a lot on a solar system. So check the description below for that code. We went with six 100 watt panels on the roof, which lead down to a Victron charge controller, two 100 amp hour lithium battle burn batteries, and a 3000 watt Victron inverter. That's a mouthful. Overall, our system has worked phenomenally. The only change we would maybe make is adding one more lithium battery. Hey, I'm Cameron. I'm gonna give you a complete tour of our system and show you all of the components that you need to design your own solar system. But before I do that, I wanna let you know that we have a complete in-depth guide posted online that goes into a lot more detail than we can in this video. Before doing our installation or even ordering the parts, we literally spent hundreds of hours doing research. This guide is the product of all that research and its goal is to help you avoid spending so much time trying to learn everything from multiple different sources on the internet, over email, over the phone, what have you, before feeling confident enough to do your own installation. So once you're done watching this video, go ahead and check the description for that link. All right, let's get started. We're up here now on the roof of the camper and as you can see, we've got 600 watt panels up here. Now there's two different main types of solar panels. There's monocrystalline and polycrystalline. All you really need to know is that you wanna get monocrystalline. It's the more modern option and they're more efficient. For the most part, that's what you're gonna see from any reputable panel provider. There's two different ways that you can wire all of your solar panels together, either in parallel or in series. Our guide will go into a lot more detail about series versus parallel, but the important thing to know is that if you wire all of your panels in series and one or part of one of them gets shaded, it can substantially reduce the output of all of the panels. So the best thing to do is to wire them in parallel as we've done up here. The output of the solar panel is rated in watts. These are 100 watt panels, and for the most part, watts is gonna be very dependent on the surface area of your panel. The bigger the surface area, the more watts it will put out. Essentially, watts are a measure of how much power a panel is able to create from the sun that it's taking in. We chose to go with Renogy panels for our installation. These are a great mid-price option. They're super high quality, um, but they're made overseas. If you have the budget for it, Zamp is a US-based company in Oregon, and they make everything in the US, and they also make a really high quality product. We actually have a Zamp portable panel, which I'll show you in a minute once we get off the roof. On the back of these panels, we chose to go with MC4 style connections. This is a quick connection that allows you to easily pull the panel off the roof if you need to replace it or clean the roof underneath it. This combiner box is a convenient watertight place for all of the cables to come together from each solar panel. At that point, you're able to run just two cables out of the box into the camper. For our solar install, it was really important for us to not drill into the roof. That was another reason that we chose to go with AM Solar. They've developed an incredibly sophisticated yet simple way to mount these solar panels without having to drill in. 3M double-sided tape. And I know it sounds crazy, but they've done thousands of installations and countless of other people have self-installed using these rocker feet with that double-sided tape with zero problems. These feet are also great because it makes it very easy to take the panel off. All you have to do is unscrew this wing nut. We also have this portable 180 watt ZAMP panel that plugs directly into our trailer. And really we don't use this very often, but it can be nice to have if we have had a couple cloudy days and we need some extra wattage to charge up quickly. Or if some of our camper's in the shade, we can put this out in the sun. It has a 30 foot extension cable on it and we can catch some sun that way. We chose to run our two heavy gauge cables from the combiner box down through the fridge vent. This allowed us, again, to not have any penetration points on the roof. It wasn't a small project. We did have to pull out this entire fridge, put it on a milk crate, and bring everything down, but it was really important to us to have the install be very sleek and have minimal cable exposure throughout the RV. What we did is we ran both cables through the fridge compartment, through the wardrobe, under the shower, along the bed, and everything terminates up underneath the bed, which is where we have our charge controller, inverter, and batteries. In just a moment, we're gonna dive into the other components of the system. But before we do that, there are three very important concepts that we first wanna understand. Those are watts, amps, and volts. To better understand these concepts, let's think of electricity like a waterfall. The water going over the edge of the waterfall is your amps, or your current. 
The difference in height between the top and bottom of your waterfall is your voltage. And the power that's generated by the water flowing over the waterfall is watts. This helps demonstrate an important concept of electricity. The greater your current, the more flow of water that you have, or the greater your voltage, the bigger difference in top and bottom of your waterfall, the more power you're generating. You see, watts are the product of amps times volts. So if you increase your current, your amps, or if you increase your volts, you're going to have greater power, watts. With most RV electrical systems, you're dealing with two voltages. You've got 12 volt, which is DC power, and 110 volt, which is AC power. The 12 volt is coming off of your batteries, and your 110 volt is either coming from shore power, or it's the result of 12 volt electricity coming out of your batteries and going through your inverter, being inverted to 110 volt power. We're now back outside the trailer at the front storage compartment where we have the bulk of our system installed. The first thing we're gonna look at is the charge controller. The charge controller serves one of the simplest but most important functions in your whole system. In essence, what it's doing is making sure that your batteries are always charging at the appropriate rate. You don't want your batteries to overcharge if they're already full, and if they're really empty, you want as much power as possible being pumped into your batteries. So the charge controller's function is to modulate that flow of energy from your solar panels into your batteries. Now there's two different kinds of charge controllers. There's a PWM charge controller and an MPPT charge controller. What you wanna look for is an MPPT charge controller. These days, an MPPT charge controller is not much more expensive than a PWM charge controller, but it's gonna do a much better job charging your batteries quickly and safely. Once you've chosen the model of charge controller that you wanna go with, the next important specification to look at is the amps that it can handle. Every 100 watts of solar is gonna produce about five amps at peak capacity. So if you had 600 watts of solar like we do on the roof, at minimum, you'd want a charge controller that could handle 30 amps of power. We went a little bit bigger than that because we also have a portable panel and we wanted to allow for the potential of future expansion. The flow of electricity is pretty simple in this case. It's flowing from the panels into the charge controller and then flows out of the charge controller in a separate set of cables to your batteries. After electricity leaves your charge controller, it's going to flow into your batteries, which serve a very important function in your overall system. When the sun is shining, you have endless power, but at night you need a way to store that power and that's where your batteries come in. Now there are three different battery chemistries to be aware of. You have lead acid, AGM, and lithium. In that order, batteries are going to get more expensive, but they're going to perform better. So what do I mean by performance? Well, first of all, a lithium or an AGM battery is going to have a much longer lifespan than a lead acid battery. You'll be lucky if a lead acid battery even lasts you through a whole season of camping. In addition, an AGM and especially a lithium battery can be discharged both at a higher rate and to a deeper level. In fact, a lithium battery can even be discharged to 0% with no negative effects on the battery. If a lead acid battery goes below 50% charge, you're irreversibly damaging the cell. An AGM battery can go a little deeper, but not by much. And what this means from a practical standpoint is that you have more usable capacity with an AGM and especially a lithium battery. In fact, one lithium battery is gonna have the same usable capacity as two AGM batteries. If you're planning to use a lot of high draw appliances, lithium batteries are probably your best option. With a good lithium battery bank, you can run a coffee maker and an Instant Pot at the same time. Some people even install enough lithium batteries to run their AC for several hours at a time. There are a few key concepts and specifications that you wanna be aware of when you're selecting your batteries. The first is the voltage rating in the batteries. For most RV installations, you're gonna to wanna to go with 12 volt batteries because that's what your existing electrical system is designed around and any RV lights, fans, etc., are gonna be designed around 12 volt power. Now you could connect two six volt batteries together in series and end up with 12 volt electricity, but that's a little beyond the scope of this video. For more information on that, go check out our guide. We've got a really in-depth section on batteries. The most important specification to look at when you're shopping for batteries is the amp hour rating. This is the rated capacity of the battery. Now remember though, if you're looking at a lead acid or an AGM battery, you really only have about 50% of that capacity available before you start damaging yourself. If you're looking at a lithium battery that's rated for 100 amp hours, you have 100 amp hours of usable capacity. If you're looking at a lead acid battery that's rated for 100 amp hours, you have about 50 amp hours of usable capacity. And you might be asking, what is an amp hour? This is the product of amps times hours. So if you have a 100 amp hour battery and you're using a device that draws a constant 10 amps, you have 10 hours before that battery is fully depleted. 
10 amps times 10 hours equals 100 amp hours. One thing to keep in mind though with amp hour ratings is that they're actually dependent on the discharge rate. So if you're using a really high draw appliance, you might actually see less usable capacity in this battery. It's kind of a complicated topic and it's something that we dive more into in our guide. So if it's something you wanna understand better, again, go check out the guide. Now you might be asking yourself, what kind of batteries should I put into my solar system? In essence, we recommend either going with AGM or lithium batteries. Lead acid batteries shouldn't even enter the conversation because if you're going to spend not only the money, but also the time on designing and installing a system, you're going to want a good battery for your system to perform. So the next question is AGM or lithium? We ultimately decided to go with lithium batteries after meeting several people on the road who had AGM batteries and then quickly upgraded to lithium because they were disappointed with the performance. Cameron and I are kind of one and done people. We wanted to buy a good product that we know would last and perform for years. You can check out our guide for the full pro and con list of all the different battery types. Essentially, the lithium batteries let you use a wide range of appliances and they have a very long lifespan. You're gonna get 10 to 15 years out of your lithium batteries, whereas with AGM, maybe a couple years. In our mind, well worth the investment. Now, a lot of things in your RV are just going to be powered by the 12 volt electricity coming straight off of your batteries. That would include things like lights, fans, your water pump, or even the USB outlets that you use to directly charge your devices. However, if you also want to have conventional AC power like you would in your house, you're going to need an inverter. The function of that device is to take electricity from your batteries and invert the electricity into 110 volt electricity. 110 volt AC power is what you would expect to get out of a conventional household plug like this one right here. Now we have these all throughout the trailer and before we upgraded our system, they were only live when we were plugged into shore power like at a campground. We did what AM Solar refers to as a full pass through installation. That means that electricity is coming from our inverter and going directly to the existing AC distribution panel in our camper. That's the distribution panel that sends electricity to all of the outlets like this one throughout our trailer. That means even when we're boondocking, we can run everything from our hot water kettle to our electric blanket, to our blender, to our instant pot. It's pretty awesome, really. There are a couple of things to look for when you're selecting an inverter. The first is you want a pure sine wave inverter. Most high quality inverters that you're gonna find on the market are going to be pure sine wave inverters. This just means that they're creating cleaner power and are more efficient. By clean power, what I mean is that it's safer for your devices. It's the same type of electricity that you'd be getting out of your home outlet, and there are no variations in the power that could potentially damage something like a computer. The other thing to look for, especially if you're doing lithium batteries, is an inverter that has a built-in converter. And what that is doing is taking the 110 volt power that you're getting from a shore power connection and converting it to 12 volt power, allowing you to charge your batteries. The Victron inverter that we have has a built-in converter that is very effective, efficient, and knows how to safely charge our lithium batteries. If you're using a cheap charger, you could very easily damage your lithiums, which you don't want to do because those things are really expensive. When you're looking at inverters, you're commonly going to see the capacity referred to as volt amps. Now remember, watts equals amps times volts. So you might think that, oh, well, a 3000 volt amp inverter means it's a 3000 watt inverter and you'd be sort of correct. When you're talking about a device like an electric water kettle, volt amps and watts, they're all the same. But anytime you're talking about a device that has an electric motor, you actually have to look at the true watt rating of the inverter. So for example, on our 3000 volt amp inverter, in most cases, it's a 3000 watt inverter. But if we were running a bunch of devices that had motors, like a blender, a vacuum cleaner, or even you know the fan on our AC unit, we would need to look at the true watt rating of the inverter. On ours, I think that's about 2,400 watts, but you can easily find that in the specifications of any inverter that you're looking at. We went with a 3 kVA Victron inverter. Now that kVA, that just means kilovolt amps, so 3 kVA is 3,000 volt amps. We went with that because we wanted to have plenty of capacity if we added another battery in the future. We started out with 200 amp hours of battery because we felt like that would be sufficient for most of our needs and the batteries if you're dealing with lithiums are the most expensive part of the system. That 3 kVA inverter gives us plenty of capacity to run multiple high draw devices at once. And if we added another battery down the road, it could easily power even more devices. Right now, I'm pretty much sitting on our inverter. It's under the head of our bed. And so to turn your inverter on and off, you need some sort of remote for that. 
There's different kinds. You can do like a fancy touch screen or you can do one like ours that just has a little toggle switch where you can either put it in charging mode or in the inverter mode that you would need to plug anything into the outlet and get power. And lastly, there are multiple ways that you can wire an inverter into a new or existing RV setup. That's something that AM Solar does a great job of helping you with. They've got a bunch of different kits for all these different options and they'll help you figure out what's right for your needs. One last small but important component of our system that I wanna talk about is our battery monitor. A battery monitor is important because it helps you see at all times the state of charge of your batteries. A good battery monitor operates by using what's called a shunt. And that device measures the amps that are going in or out of your batteries as they're being either charged or used to power your devices. Using this information, the battery monitor is able to calculate the true percent charge that is in your batteries at all times, just like on your phone or on your laptop. This is really important information to have when you're boondocking so that you can use your power wisely and make sure that you're not using too much power given your conditions. Well, that's pretty much all the major components of an RV solar system but there are a lot of minor components that are also involved and you couldn't build the system without them. Before we'd actually done this installation and put our hands on everything, we really had no idea all the odds and ends that are required to put the whole system together. This includes stuff like wires, lugs, fasteners, fuses, bus bars, all kinds of crazy things that you've probably never even heard of if you don't have any experience with electrical. For newbies like us, AM Solar's kit made the whole installation a lot easier and less overwhelming. Everything comes in clearly labeled baggies and they even provide diagrams to help you understand how things need to connect together. And as we mentioned earlier, they're always just a phone call or an email away if you have a question about how to do something. This type of customer support was really helpful to us because when we started our installation, we didn't even know how to determine the right gauge wire to use for a given run. And on top of that, at the very end of the whole installation, I made the final connection, flipped the switch, and I got a spark and everything just went black. Um, I had no idea what was going on. I couldn't get power to come out of the batteries and AM Solar was there. I called them up. We spent a couple days figuring out what the problem was. And in the end, it was just a simple thing and the whole system worked fine. It was really confidence inspiring just knowing that level of support was there. You know, we're pretty handy. We've done a lot of DIY projects, but tackling something of this scale with an electrical system was new to us. So again, that was just really nice to have. Well, thanks for watching. We really hope you found this information helpful. And again, if you have more detailed questions about sizing your system, about battery chemistries, anything like that, make sure to go check out our guide. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. We do monitor this channel daily and we'll respond to all and any questions that you have. And don't forget to get that discount code in the description below as well.